Welcome to Plug Life Television. You may have seen in the news recently that Tesla drivers faced record queues at superchargers in England over the 2022 Christmas holidays. Reports show tens of Teslas queuing, apparently for hours, to use these superchargers. But is this a typical daily occurrence and a sign of things to come? And if so, can it be solved and how? The queue that made the headlines was at the supercharger at T-Bay Services. Located in the picturesque Lake District, just south of Shap Summit, the highest section of motorway in Britain, this rural service station boasts a farm shop full of locally sourced goods and a cafe that serves delicious food that is considerably better than the fast food outlets you'd find at other motorway services. Such is the unique appeal of T-Bay Services that it even has its own TV show. So, unsurprisingly, it's a very popular place to stop for lunch, a browse of the farm shop and some fresh air in the countryside. So, T-Bay was always going to be a busy supercharger stop in the early afternoon, but the trains were on strike over the Christmas holidays, which led to more people planning to visit friends and family by car rather than public transport. Information from the AA shows that as much as 51% would be travelling on one day over the holidays. The storm was already brewing, but on top of this, T-Bay Services is an old supercharger site that is in need of expansion. A typical modern Tesla supercharger installation at a UK motorway service station has eight superchargers per side of the motorway, but T-Bay's superchargers are located on the southbound side only, with no northbound superchargers. Tesla drivers heading northbound have to use a small country lane to cross the motorway and go into the southbound services via a side entrance. This means that there are effectively four superchargers per side of a very busy three-lane motorway at a very popular service station that doubles as a tourist destination. On top of this, the superchargers at T-Bay are old. Modern V3 Tesla superchargers can deliver up to 250 kilowatts of power each, but the old V2s found at T-Bay max out at 150. This is unsurprising because they were installed back in 2017, when eight 150 kilowatt chargers was considered ample and fast. V2 superchargers may be able to deliver up to 150 kilowatts, but they're linked in pairs and share their power between them. So, if a Tesla is charging on Supercharger A and another Tesla comes along and plugs into Supercharger B, the maximum power is halved. This is a bit of an inconvenience for older Model S from around the time that the T-Bay Superchargers were built, which tend to max out at 120 kilowatts even on a 150 kilowatt V2 charger, but for newer Model 3s that can pull up to 250 kilowatts, this adds considerable time to charging sessions when all of T-Bay Superchargers are in use especially if everyone's stopping for a nice lunch made from locally sourced ingredients. So, a culmination of older, slower V2 superchargers, plus the lure of T-Bay's famous farm shop and cafe, plus rail strikes, plus huge numbers of people taking to the roads over the Christmas holidays, resulted in the massive queues that hit the news. Is it a daily occurrence? No. On a side note, according to EV Database, Approximately 75% of the makes and models of electric car that you can buy today have a real-world range of 200 miles or more per charge, and the average round-trip commute in the UK is about 26 miles according to the RAC. If you can charge at home, or at a nearby 7 kilowatt destination public charge point, then public rapid charging is rare, not the norm. Queues are rare too. Most electric drivers end up saving time versus refuelling a petrol car because it takes them seconds to plug in when they get to their home or work, and they arrive back to a fully charged car after they've finished working or sleeping, rather than having to go out of their way to a petrol station, which may have a queue. So now we know that the record Tesla supercharger queues are an exception, is there any way that we can avoid them happening again? Can it be solved, and if so, how? Tesla's already on the case, and is installing new superchargers on the northbound side of T-Bay services. This is just one of many high power charging hubs springing up across the UK with loads more coming from brands like Gridserve, Fastned, Instavolt, Ionity, Osprey and MFG to name a few. There will be more choice for drivers looking for rapid charging hubs on this stretch of the M6 in the near future, rather than T-Bay being the biggest for miles. The National Grid has said that it has more than enough electricity to charge all of the UK's cars when they switch to electric, with tens upon tens of gigawatts worth of clean power generation slated to come online before 2030. But the bottleneck for new charging hubs at the moment has typically been getting that power to them in the first place. To show what I mean, let's build a new Tesla supercharger site with eight 250 kilowatt V3 superchargers. This requires a two megawatt grid connection. Well, I've approximated it to two MVA, but I won't confuse you with power engineering stuff for now. Let's assume it means the same thing. To connect the superchargers to the grid, 
they will require a substation that converts voltage from the distribution grid, which is 11 kilovolts, to the input voltage of the chargers, which is around 400 volts. But what if the local distribution grid doesn't have enough spare power? Then the 11 kilovolt network will need to be upgraded to accept higher power, and a new primary substation will need to be built to convert more power to 11 kilovolts from the 33 kilovolts transmission grid. The responsibility for upgrading the 11 kilovolt network and primary substation falls to the Distribution Network Operator, or DNO. Britain has many different DNOs that each look after a different region of the grid. You can get independent DNOs as well, they can do much of the work for you, but the DNO ultimately has to connect you to the grid in the end. A recent report by eSmart Networks on behalf of the Electric Vehicle Association of Northern Ireland provides some useful indicative figures as to what the grid upgrade costs would be for our supercharger site. Let's say that the DNO upgrades the 11 kV network to 5 NVA capacity and installs a new 20 NVA primary substation. The grid connection costs for our supercharger site would then be as follows. For the supercharger's own substation and 400 volt cable run, this would cost about £200,000 and be paid for in full by the supercharger's owner. The 11 kV network upgrade would cost £1 million, but in Great Britain, this cost is socialised, so each customer only pays for the amount of capacity that they use. In this case, we require two out of the five MVA available, which works out at £400,000. The new primary substation is £2 million, but again this cost is socialised, so we pay £200,000. Spare a thought for Northern Ireland though, where these costs are not socialised, and the supercharger's owners would have to pay for the full whack, even if other customers connect to the spare capacity of the upgraded network later on. This is why Northern Ireland has very few charging hubs at the moment, although their government is now working to resolve this issue. Back to Great Britain, and the total cost of the grid connection for our supercharging site is £800,000, so it's very expensive to get power to large rapid charging hubs in rural areas. However, help is on the way. In March 2023, the rules around grid connections change in Great Britain, so the cost of the 11 kV network upgrade and new primary substation would be removed from the bill. The Office for Zero Emission Vehicles has also announced a rapid charging fund that will provide £950 million to upgrade the grid to motorway service stations so that large, high-power charging hubs can be installed. This money is focused on England, but there will likely be Barnet consequentials for Scotland. This will allow large charging hubs with lots of high-power chargers to be rolled out faster, where they're needed, minimising the chance of queues anywhere. Other potential bottlenecks to building new charging hubs include land access disputes. The cable run from a primary substation to a charging hub may go through land owned by many different people and businesses, and it can take time to agree terms to install these cables. Some landowners seem to be deliberately difficult about it, but others have valid concerns that need to be addressed first. Then there's the lead times on the chargers themselves. We're still going through a global chip shortage and global shipping disruption, which will add time onto the delivery of chargers to their new sites. DNO grid connection times vary depending on who your local DNO is, with some being quick to connect charging hubs to the grid, but others are notoriously slow. The government needs to intervene and deal with these DNOs that aren't growing to meet demand, and with it, increased revenue that means that they can hire more engineers to connect more customers to the grid. The government should heavily fine DNOs that are slow to connect customers of any description to the grid. Charging hubs, houses, offices, the list goes on. Making sure that they get a move on and keep the country moving as a result. So, grid connection costs can be solved and the government's already working to bring the cost down via new funding and rules. Grid connection lead times are more of a mixed bag with land access disputes and slower DNOs holding up some projects but the new UK government funding to bring high power grid connections to English motorway service stations will mean that charging hubs can be built much quicker in the very near future. In the meantime, charging hub owners have multiple options available to make the most of an existing grid connection, even if it's not big enough to supply all of their chargers at once. On-site battery storage and smarter chargers. Let's look at batteries first. A battery installed between the chargers and the grid connection can be charged up using whatever grid capacity is available and then combine its discharge power with the grid connection to supply more power to the chargers than the grid could do on its own. Take for example a 1 megawatt grid connection and a battery that can discharge at 1 megawatt. That would give enough power to supply 8 V3 Tesla superchargers at once. This saves money on grid connections but batteries can be expensive to buy, so the charging hub owner needs to crunch the numbers to see if the savings on a grid connection upgrade outweigh the cost of a battery. Battery capacity is also important. The battery needs to be able to store enough energy to power all of the chargers for a full 24 hour period. 
If the total energy in kilowatt hours discharged from the battery to cars using the superchargers is less than the total energy that is charged from the grid by the battery over a 24 hour period, then a battery will work very well at the charging hub. However, if the cars discharge the battery before the end of the day, with the grid's capacity unable to recharge the battery during that time, then the battery will run flat and the charging hub will have limited power supply, in this case being restricted to the one megawatt available directly from the grid. The other option for making the most of existing grid connections is smarter chargers. Most chargers today are either standalone and can't share power with their neighbours, or are connected in pairs and split their power 50-50 when each charger is in use, regardless of the power that each car actually needs. For example, this standalone high power charger can provide 350 kilowatts of power to a car, but the Nissan Leaf using it only draws 50 kilowatts. This results in 300 kilowatts of unused power that cannot be given to another EV, resulting in other cars having to queue despite power being available. This leads to underutilization of the site's grid connection. More cars could be charging at the same time using the exact same grid connection. This is where dynamic load management comes in. One of the best examples is ChemPower's system, which features a central power cabinet full of 25 kilowatt power modules that add up to whatever capacity you need for your charging hub. In this case, we have 350 kilowatts worth of power modules, making use of the same grid capacity as the 350 kilowatt standalone charger. The power cabinet assigns the power modules to one of many dispensers or charging plugs in any order, depending on the power that each car needs. Power modules can be individually swapped mid-charge as one car's charging power tapers off and assigned to cars that can make better use of those power modules. In this scenario, we have a Volkswagen ID3 that can charge at 100 kilowatts, but only has one 25 kilowatt power module assigned to it. If the Ionic 5's charging power drops below 125 kilowatts as its battery fills up, then some of the power modules can be swapped from the Ionic 5 to the ID3 to give it a boost in charge power without slowing down the Ionic 5's charging speed. This maxes out the grid connection and minimizes wasted capacity by assigning power in 25 kilowatt segments across a large charging hub. Here, we have four electric cars charging using the same grid connection as one 350 kilowatt standalone charger, with no grid upgrade needed and a huge reduction in queues. Finally, here's a quick tip to beat the queues. If a charging hub is at a popular destination with something fancy like a farm shop, a nice cafe or a designer outlet where people are going to want to browse, and you're going there at lunchtime during the holidays, then there's a higher chance of queues. If time is an issue, Aim for a charging hub at a location that isn't fancy and doesn't have any tourist attractions, such as the excellent high power charging hubs at MFG petrol stations or Tesla's superchargers at their service centres in industrial estates, such as the superchargers in Birmingham or Edinburgh Newbridge, and avoid the lunchtime rush if possible. This means that there will be much less chance of queues, even during the holidays. However, given the number of ever bigger and ever better charging hubs undergoing planning and construction, and grid upgrades being built so that they can be brought online as fast as possible, Queues are likely to be rare indeed, especially the sort of queues that we saw during the 2022 Christmas holidays at eBay.